Berlin, Berlin, hier lebt der Mensch gefährlich und rutscht er aus, dann dreht sich keiner um. Doch haut er hin, dann ist der Beifall ehrlich. Berlin, Berlin, du bist mein Publikum. Das ist Berlin, wie es weint und wie es lacht. Welcome to a new show of My Berlin. Today I'm meeting the ambassador of Pakistan. I will not meet him in the embassy. He and his lovely wife invited me to their residency in Zielendorf. Hello. Hi. Oh, wow. Oh, Good Thank afternoon. You. Good afternoon. Thank you that I can be here. Welcome to our place. Thank and you. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Oh, it's so Please beautiful. Step inside. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Salim. Yeah. Would you like to sign our visiting book? Oh, I have to. Okay. Yes. That's usually when you come here, you have to sign. Yeah, um, okay. usually you have to sign if you are having a dinner at your residence. So okay, of you course. Write down your name here. Yes. And uh, if you want to give your remarks at the end, yes. we don't mind. I will. Yeah, at the end. <laughs> okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, TV Berlin, my Berlin. In the residence of Pakistan. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Ambassador, <laughs> Mr. Salim. Thank you, you. Thank you for having me here. No, it's a, it's a great pleasure to have you here. It's a beautiful residency. And welcome to Pakistan Home, the Pakistan House. The Pakistan House, you call it. <laughs> beautiful. I'm, I'm so delighted that I was greeted by your wife. <laughs> oh. That's so nice. And I heard that's your birthday. Yeah, today's yes, your birthday. Yes, today's my birthday. Happy birthday. How are you saying it you. in your language? Uh, <laughs> Sangira Mubarak. Sangira Mubarak, yeah. Alles Gute, <laughs> auf Deutsch. <laughs> Thank you. Once Thank again. you. So you're going to show me around yeah, in your please, residency? Please, please, okay, okay, thank please you. Come inside. And um, you will come? I'll, I'll join you guys uh, at lunch. Oh yeah, looking okay, forward to it. So please go inside. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Salim, now we're in your beautiful residency. We're sitting <laughs> down. In which room are we? Oh, that's what we call it the drawing room. So that's where the, you know, these two rooms is where the guests are received, I mean, they're seated. And of course, that's where you have all the chit chat and sort of, you know, like, um, and normally after sort of, you know, like the refreshments and sort of um, discussions, then we move to the, dry, and the dining room for a dinner or a lunch, which we'll be doing today as well <laughs> for lunch. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, but before we come there, let's talk about you from Pakistan. So. Yes, you <laughs> were born, um, and tell me about how you grew up. Oh, yeah, I was born in a city called Lahore. That is the second largest city of Pakistan. Uh, it's actually, in, you know, it's, it's called the heart of Pakistan because that's the cultural sort of heart of Pakistan, a very historical city. It's a big city, relatively speaking, because it's a city of about... Um, Nine million people. Oh my God, that's <laughs> so, huge. <laughs> Islamabad European. is the, uh, the Islamabad, main capital. Islamabad right? is the capital. Yeah, okay. But that's actually a smaller city. Oh. The capital is mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, Islamabad and Rawalpindi, they're twin cities, and together they will be about four or five million because they're just located together. Mm -hmm. Islamabad itself is just like one and a half million. But in Rawalpindi is, is sort of, you know, a city which is, I mean, they're almost, almost located together. So it's one kind of, you know, mega city. Um, but my city, Lahore, it's known for its, hist uh, for its history because it has those Mughal uh, time, the buildings of Mughal times, a beautiful mosque, um, which was, by the way, um, you know, which some of our friends here in Germany uh, call them the most beautiful mosque in the world. Oh. Um, and then we have the f very old fort there, Lahore Fort, again built by the Mughal kings. Uh, it's a huge fort and these are together. Uh, then we have the Shalimar Gardens, again built by the Mughals, mm. very famous. So that's where I was uh, born and had my early life. I went to a Catholic school actually. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we had a Catholic school close to our house. It was called um, St. Mary's High School. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the principal of the school was actually a priest. You know, we used to call him Father Henry. 
Um, isn't it rare? Because it, isn't it 97% Muslimic? In yeah, that, that is true. Yeah. But, but the, that is then another interesting wow. part of our history. Because of our historical linkage with Europe, you know, Britain in particular, mm -hmm. we had a lot of what they call missionary schools and colleges in Pakistan. Some of the very good ones, you know, they were being run by these the Catholic Church or the, uh, you know, the Protestant Church or the Presbyterian. In my high school, you know, it's, that was a Catholic um, uh, high school linked to a Catholic church. So there was a church in the school. Um, and in my class, I, remember, I still remember, there were, of course, the majority was Muslims, but they're also, uh, you know, like uh, Hindu. We had a Hindu. Mm -hmm. we, we had many Christians in our class. We had uh, Zoroastrians in our class. So it was quite a mixed sort yeah. of group in terms of religious um, and uh, ethnic sort of, you know, like ethnicity. So I kind of, you know, like I was not raised to think in terms of in parochial terms or think in ethnic terms. Mm -hmm. You know, I was more like, you know, we used to think of ourselves as, um, you know, as Pakistanis and then, of course, as part of humanity. The language it calls Urdu, Urdu. it's national language. What does that mean? And, and the official is English. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that is interesting because Urdu is actually the word Urdu. It's a Turkish word, mm -hmm. and the word Urdu, Urdu, it means army, you know. Mm -hmm. So actually, the language started during the Mughal times, because the Mughal armies, they had, of course, because the, the Mughals were actually Turkic people. So you know, like, and, but they also had a lot of people who spoke Persian, you know. But then again, you know, because in our part of the world, a lot of people came from, uh, you know, Arabia as well, from the Arab world, you know, you know, and that's how Islam started there. Uh, so that is Urdu, you know. And that is why, you know, in Urdu, there are thousands and thousands of words of Persian, thousands and thousands of words of Turkish, thousands and thousands of words of Arabic, and of course, you know, like literally tens of thousands of words of Hindi, you know. So it's basically, uh, it's a very rich language with a very rich history, literature. In fact, not only in Pakistan, but in many other countries, including India, for instance, in, the, in their movies, you know, when you and you know they're, they're, they're like song and dance movies Bollywood mm -hmm. but in their movies you know like most of the time the poetry is in Urdu you know because Urdu poetry is you know it, it, it has a better pro I mean it has a kind of more musical tradition of poetry uh, more suitable for songs um, instead of you know like and that is why a lot of times their songs are more Urdu than Hindi okay. <laughs> oh, very interesting and then you went to study not also in Pakistan, but you went also in the United States where you yes. studied. Uh, after the school, uh, I went to a college in Pakistan. Uh, I studied there, a very famous, again, government college. That is it's, it's one of the most, most well-known uh, in, 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 in the country, actually. It had been, again, it's a, it's a build with the buildings of Gothic-style buildings, mm -hmm. you know, built like uh, 150 years ago and, uh, you know, like, makes you feel as if you're in the UK or some other sort of European country. Um, a college with a great tradition, even the, the current Prime Minister of Pakistan, a lot of previous uh, heads of states and governments, various walks of life have been to that college, you know, like have been the alumni of that college. So I went there, um, and after that I went to the US. Um, I went there and studied at University of Pennsylvania. Um, what did you study? Uh, there I studied uh, international relations and government administration. Subsequently, I also studied at um, Johns Hopkins University in the U.S. There I studied international economics. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I went another time to the U.S., but then this time I went for more of a teaching and research assignment. Uh, that was at Georgetown University. Washington. Washington DC. I, I used to live there too. So. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yes. I've, I've lived there like, yeah, I think in two or, uh, yeah, two or three different stints. When did you become ambassador? I became, amb I was appointed ambassador in 2007. Um, you know, in 2008, I sort of, you know, joined my assignment in Bosnia and mm -hmm. Herzegovina. I was ambassador wow. there um, for three years. I was also ambassador to Croatia. Subsequently, I was appointed as ambassador to Bahrain. Um, you know, I was there for a few years. Then I went back um, to Islamabad as additional foreign secretary, um, you know. And from there, I was appointed as ambassador to Germany. And I've been here now almost one and a half years. Wow. 
I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> and how do you, since you said it, it's very uh, comparing to to your country, um, where you live here now in Seelendorf, or Berlin, the historic sites, how you like it? No, oh, Berlin is a beautiful city. Um, I like it very much. And I'll tell you an interesting anecdote in yes. this regard. When I was, you know, I was being appointed ambassador, uh, you know, you know, you always have some choices, of course. You oh, know, you do? Some, yeah. Okay. Um, Can you tell us the other choices? Yeah, the other choice was very interesting. <laughs> it was actually, um, it was basically Paris or Berlin, you know, so okay. France or Germany. So I had to sort of, you know, I, so I had to kind of, in some ways, I had to decide, you know, like these were the, the two choices available. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to, of course, you see the political kind of, you know, like, relations and the economic relations and so you know there, there are lots of factors and of course you know in terms of sometimes you have to consider right yeah, you, yeah you see the quality of life as well while making choices of course the final decision rests with the government but you know but they mm -hmm. ask you okay what is your preference so my preference uh, was Berlin actually you know okay. um, despite the fact that Paris is a glamorous city and everything uh, but so I chose Berlin mm -hmm. um, and and one of the interesting parts of sort of that decision making process was that when I asked with you know some of the family members you know my wife and also some of my young ne nephew and nieces who actually some of them have been brought up in other countries like you know my brother and my sisters and my brothers we all live in different countries of the world so I asked them what do you think is a more exciting city you know just to get their opinion and interestingly enough, most of them said Berlin and not Paris. So I was surprised oh. because I, I thought the youngsters, you know, like, because, you know, they know better than us. <laughs> you know? so, 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 and I, I don't regret the choice that I made. I think it's a wonderful city uh, with lots of history, lots of culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and of course, it's a center of music, you know, amazing mu music tradition you have in Germany. Um, and there's so much to do here, you know, whether you talk about museums, arts, m music, the wonderful Philharmonic, Berlin Philharmonic is, yeah. you know, it's very, very well known. You have very good operas, theater, you know, cinemas. So I sort of feel like it's a very happening place. Yes. <laughs> and now we're in this residency and you moved in here with your wife? I have a daughter and a son. And another convenience is that they both go to British school, mm -hmm. you know, because we have, we're used to the British system of education, so it's convenient. And the good thing is that the school is not too far from her. The British school is just one kilometer from her. Great. You know, because this used to be the British quarter of the town of, of Berlin, you know, like okay. after the war. So so that is sort of another yeah, another convenience. So the ambassador before you, they were in this residence as well? Yeah. Yeah. Because this property belongs to um, the government of Pakistan. It's mm -hmm. a Pakistan house. Um, so we have, yeah, so it's basically like whoever comes as an ambassador um, stays here. Das ist Berlin, wie es weint und wie es lacht.